uh, honey, you really need to call them. We think this would be a better option for you. So I was like, okay, not a problem. I called them, liked everything I heard. You know, um, they actually called me and my husband separately and talked to both of us. Um, after that, um, we had, um, I'm sorry, my mind is, every time I talk about it, I kind of get emotional trying not to do this video and cry. I just want to talk. So, um, I decided to choose the Cancer Treatment Center of America, and they sent me to Chicago, Illinois. We're actually Zion, Illinois, but we flew into Chicago. Um, and I did my treatment there. I had a wonderful oncologist, um, Dr. T, and uh, her team. They really took good care of me. Um, when I went up there, though, um, to decide if I was going to use them, I came down with a really bad infection. So I had to have another major surgery before they could even let me come home. Um, this left me in the hospital for five days. Um, a trip that was supposed to take three days ended up taking ten. But, hey, I'm still allowed to talk about it. Um, they ended up doing uh, a surgery. I think it was a sarcoma or whatever when you have an infectious pocket um, in the area that you've had your cancer. They had to drain it. Then I was sent home for two months on a um, uh, a vac, a med vac to kind of dry out so that it wouldn't cause another infection um, so it could heal and drain and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I had that, like I said, for two months. And then I went back, and by this time, it was January. And that's when I started my chemotherapy. Um, my chemotherapy... They gave me three chemo drugs. Um, the acronyms for them was the TAC. That's the one that I received. I can't pronounce them, but I received the, the T, the A, and the C. So, um, very, very strong drugs to the point that it had turned my hands black. They were like the color of my, my blouse. Um, my feet were black. Of course, you know, 14 days after I started chemo, I lost my hair and got a little bit coming back now. I'm kind of excited about that. Um, yeah, exactly 14 days to the letter, my hair started coming out in clumps. Um, it was a little emotional. It was Valentine's Day, actually, uh, February 14th. And, um, my husband took me to the American Cancer Society to go and get me a wig. And we went out, we went shopping for wigs. We went there and I found one that I like. Most of them were like gray wigs and I'm not nowhere near old. So I decided not to get one of those, but I got one and some scarves and some hats and things like that. And, um, we just went out and he made it, you know, every step of the way he's been, he's been my rock. He made it, um, he made it, what's the word, uh. A little bit easier for me to handle because he was there I don't tell him that often but he if I didn't have my husband by my side through this I don't know what what I would have done um, like I said he took off from work he took me to go get the wigs we went to lunch and he was like it's okay you know and you're still beautiful and I love you and all of that and you know he held me because I was just like by the end of the night you know after um, first clump came out right here at the end of the night, like I had like big spotches, blotches of hair where it was just coming out. And I had, you know, I got a haircut in January when I went back to start my chemo. So it was about, you know, my hair is about that long. So it wasn't that dramatic as I thought it was going to be if I would have had my long hair, um, coming down. But again, um, you know, it was, it was a lot and I had my husband. Like I say, every step of the way with me. Um, finished chemo. I did six rounds of chemo. Um, met some really awesome people while we were up there. Some real good friends. Now they're my friends. Um, my doctors, like I say, were excellent. They rallied around us. You know, um, a lot of them believe in God like I do. And um, they were like, you know, we're praying for you. And my people back home, you know, they prayed for me. Um, and they just, you know, I had a, I had an awesome, awesome support system. But um, I have a 10-year-old son. I failed to mention that. I did say that my husband's in the lobby with him. But um, my 10-year-old son has gone through so much, you know, with this. Um, he is such a sweet little boy. He 
You know, he loves his mom, and he tells everybody. He's like, my mom has cancer, but she's fighting it. She's fighting it hard. I'm not even worried about it. You know, my mama got this. Well, <laughs> I thought about him today, and that's pretty much the reason why I wanted to make this video. Because, you know, you never know what happens when you have cancer. Um, I went in for my radiation appointment today, and uh, I supposed to be it's supposed to be my last week, so I was really excited. But they let me know they were going to add another week on to it because things were looking a little um didn't look like they thought they should look so anyway they're gonna give me a boost so i'm excited about that you know that i have doctors who are very proactive on you know on my team not telling me go lose weight and then everything will be better <laughs> um but yeah i decided to make this video because I, I love him and i love my husband i love my whole family but those two you know i, I live with them and they're here with me and I just love them so much, and I want them to know that, you know, um, through all of this, they, they've they always remained right here in my heart, you know. Um, they're the reason why I fight. I, I don't, I don't want to leave them behind, and, you know, I lost a close friend of mine to lymphoma um, back in February 2012. So to lose her and then to get diagnosed with cancer, you know, soon after was kind of, kind of rough, but, you know, um, like I say, I I um I just wanted to make this video pretty much. Like I say, I didn't hear any stories that were like mine about, you know, um doctors misdiagnosing them and then you coming out and having the cancer way worse than what could have been prevented, you know, a long time ago. But anyway, like I've seen on different videos, you know, you just have to stay positive. Stay, you know, with that smile on your face and all of that good stuff. It it really makes a difference in your progress. It really makes a difference in how you heal. Um, the people, if you have negative people around you, you know, get rid of them. Let them know, you know, you don't have time for negativity. You know, this, this is the time for you to focus on you and, you know, you need positive energy around you. I'm all about that, you know. I need positive people around me so that I can remain positive. So I can have a positive outlook on things. Um, never be afraid to ask your doctors any questions because that's what they're there for. You know, they are the ones who went to school for eight years and every year they have to go for new training. They're the ones who, you know, had sleepless nights staying up trying to, you know, learn new things about oncology. You know, they, they're, they're there for you. You know, sometimes they might look a little tight-lipped or whatever, but when it all boils down to it at the end of the day, your medical and radiology oncologists are two of your biggest support systems. If you have a question, they really, really, really want to help. So never be afraid to ask them um, any questions. I know I'm starting to ramble a little bit, so I'm going to end this video, but I... um. I just wanted, like I said, to, to share that with you. I am going to bring this camera up a little closer to my face. You can see I have eyebrows coming in. And I guess you can see uh, little, my little peach fuzz, as my son likes to call it, is coming in all over. It's It's been growing for about a week now, so I'm really excited. I just uh, actually moisturize it. Yeah, <laughs> my mom would laugh at me. I'm like, you moisturize that little tiny bit of hair. But, yep. Yeah. This is me, and this is my story. Like I said, I'm a 32-year-old wife and mother, and uh, thanks for watching. All right.